All right, um, here we go for um, question number 27. Question number 27 is interesting in that the antiderivative, again, average value is um, the 1 over b minus a. Um, that's 27. 1 over b minus a integrating from a to b of the function f of x dx. So this is 1 over ln4 minus ln2 integrating from ln2 to ln4 of 6x squared e to the x cubed dx. The interesting thing is to complete the integration you have to use integration by substitution. So I'm going to have to do let u equals x cubed, the inside function. Then du dx is going to be 3x squared. So therefore, dx is going to be du divided by 3x squared. Now, I leave off the, the um, limits of integration for now. Let's focusing on the antiderivative, 6x squared e to the u du divided by 3x squared after I substitute for the first and the last lines. The x squareds will cancel out. 3 goes into 6 twice. And so this is the antiderivative of 2e to the u du. The antiderivative right here is going to be um, 2e to the u plus c, but we leave the plus c off because it's going to be a definite integral. And so then this is going to be equals to 2e u as x cubed. So 2e x cubed, and I'm integrating from x equals ln4 to x equals ln2. So what I'm going to have to do is 2 times e to the ln4 raised to the third power minus 2 times um, e to the ln2 raised to the third power and subtract the two answers. And let us not forget it's an average value, so it's 1 over ln4 minus ln2. And remember the original problem I had this ln4 minus ln2 in front. Upper limit of integration, lower limit of integration. Aren't you glad you get to use a calculator? 1 over ln4 minus ln2. And ln4 is where you go, you find the natural logarithm of 4. And then you raise that to the third power. And then you find the e of that. And then you multiply that by 2. And the answer you get is 28.71288 minus, and then you and then you do the same thing again ln of 2, so you go find a natural log of 2, then you raise it to the third power, and then you find the e of that, so second e, I'm doing this on my calculator as I'm saying right here, and then you multiply by 2, and the answer you get is 2.79036. You subtract the two answers and then you multiply by whatever that decimal is. So, I go 28.71 minus 2.71. equals 25.92248 um, 
And now I got to figure out what 1 over ln 4 minus 2 is. So, whew, ln 4 minus ln 2. Whew. And then I got to divide that by 1. 1 divided by that number. So that's 1.442695. You multiply those together, and that is your answer. And the answer is 37.4022. Talk about a long question to start out front. But all right, so that's number 27. Um, questions number 28 and 29 are find the area under the curve. So for number 28, I have a curve that looks like this. The equation is um, f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. And it's going from 1 to 2. I gotta find this area in here. So that's the integral from 1 to 2. It's a definite integral of 2x squared minus 3x plus 4dx. And then you work out the definite integral from there. Okay, remember the area between the curve and the x axis is found by using a definite integral. Whew, so integrate. So that's 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 4x. I have to plug in x equals 2, plug in x equals 1, and then subtract the answers. Notice that there are lots of fractions in here, so you may want to bring your fraction calculator along. So that's going to be 2 times 2 to the third over 3 minus 3 times 2 squared over 2 plus 4 times 2 minus 2 times 1 to the third over 3 minus 3 times 1 squared over 2 plus 4 times 1. Oh boy, what's 2, 8, that's 16 over 3 minus um, 2 to the squared is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 plus 8, um, 2 over 3, um, minus 3 over 2 plus 4. Subtract them. You have a handy dandy calculator for a reason. So 16 divided by 3 minus 6 minus or oh, plus 8. Um, minus 2 divided by 3 plus 3 divided by 2 minus 4. And the answer is 4.16. Repeating for 4.17 approximately to two decimal places. Um, 29 is more of the same. They give you the graph of a function. The function looks like this. It is f of x is equal to a very long x to the fourth minus 9x cubed. Please have your calculator with you. 12x squared plus 44x minus 8. Oh my goodness. And then this right here is a 1. And this right here is a 5. And you want you to find the area in between. So you set up the definite integral. I'm going from 1 to 5 of x to the fourth minus 9x cubed plus 12x squared plus 44 minus 8dx. Who thought of this question? Hopefully it wasn't me. Anyways, x to the 5 over 5 minus 9x to the 4 over 4 plus 12x cubed over 3 plus 44x squared over 2 minus 8x. Can we leave off the plus c? Got to plug in 5, oh goodness, 
I plug in one and then subtract the two answers. Um, the 12 and the 3 cancels give us a 4. The 2 goes into 44 22 times. So that's going to be 5 to the 5 over 5 minus 9 times 5 to the 4 over 4 um, plus 4 times 5 cubed plus 22 times 5 squared minus 8 times 5 minus the whole thing but plugging 1. 1 to the 5 over 5 minus 9 times 1 to the 4 over 4 plus 4 times 1 to the 3rd um, plus 22 times 1 minus 8 times 1. And handy dandy calculator. 5 raised to the 5 divided by 5. Um, minus 9 times 5 raised to the 4th divided by 4 um, plus 4 times 5 raised to the 3rd um, plus 22 times 5 raised to the 2nd minus Eight times five. And that gives me an answer of three hundred and fifty-three point seven five minus. I got to the whole thing one divided by five um, minus nine divided by four plus four. Plus 22 minus 8 equals minus 15.95. Um, and so my answer is 337.8. And that is my area. Whew. Aren't you glad we created man created calculators? Oof. All right. So the last section is a section focused on finding the unknown function, especially finding c. The unknown integration. So for these questions, they will always give you two parts. So for example, for number thirty, they give us the derivative f of x equals to two x plus four. And then they tell us that when I plug in 2 into the function, the answer is 6. So, very simply, f of x is the antiderivative of the derivative. And so, to find the function, I simply find the antiderivative of 2x plus 4, dx. And so that gives me 2x squared over 2 plus 4x plus c which tells me my function after these cancel out is x squared plus 4x plus c. At this point, however, I have not actually figured out the function f of x because this c is missing. Oh no! And so what I have to do right here is I use this second piece. That's what this is for, to help us find c. This says that when I plug in 2, the answer is going to be 6. So when I plug in 2 into the function, 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus c, the answer I will get is 6. Well, 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 8 plus c is equal to 6. I have to find the c that balances this equation. And algebra does that for us automatically. 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 plus c is equal to 6. And I subtract 12 on both sides. So c is equal to negative 6. Therefore, the function is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 6. So this function, when I plug in 2, I get 6. But also, when I take the derivative, I get 2x plus 4. And so that's my answer right here. So all of those questions follow the same basic idea. Integrate the derivative. It will give us a plus c. Plug in 
the information to then find C and then write out the final answer of the function. So, number 31, um, the derivative, again, trying to find f is 3x squared minus 2x plus 4. And when I plug in 1 into the original function, the answer is 3. So I integrate the 3x squared minus 2x plus 4 dx. And that's going to be x cubed minus x squared plus 4 dx. Notice how I just skip to the answer right here. So I mean the growths are pretty easy, and so you can just look at them and figure out what the answer is. But that's not dx, that's a plus c. And so my function is x cubed minus x squared or 4x um, plus 4x um, plus c. When I plug in 1, the answer is 3. I can use that to find c. f of 1 means 1 cubed minus 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus c. And that whole thing evaluates to 3. 1 minus 1 plus 4 plus c equals 3. 1 minus 1 is 0, so 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 plus c is 3. c is equal to negative 1. So I can write my problem as f of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared plus 4x minus 1. More of the same, number 32, um, f prime is equal to the square root of x. Therefore, I have to take the antiderivative of the square root of x, which is the antiderivative of x to the 1 half which is x to the 3 halves over 3 halves plus c, which is x to the 3 halves multiplied by 2 over 3, which is 2 thirds the square root of x cubed plus c. Whew. All of that's to say that for this function, when I plug in 1, when I plug in 4, sorry, the answer is 2. But did I not write it down? f of 4 is equal to 2. And so f of 4 means 2 over 3, the cube root, the square root of 4 cubed plus c. And that equals, when I plug in an answer of 2. So that's 2 over 3. Oh boy, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8 plus c is equal to 2. You think of this as 8 over 1. So this is 16 over 3 plus c is equal to 2. I have a fraction, and so I multiply by 3 to get rid of the denominator. So these cancel 16 plus 3c, distribute the 3. Distribute 3 across is equal to 6. Subtract 16. 3c is equal to negative 10. Divide by c. c is equal to negative 10 over 3. And that goes back into the original problem. And so f of x, the function is 2 thirds the square root x to the third power minus 10 over 3. When I plug in 4 into this function, my answer is going to be 2. When I take the derivative of this function, my answer is going to be the square root of x. Fancy, right? Mm. All right. Last problem. Um, 
number 33. Um, let's say I have f prime of x is equal to 2 over x plus 4x minus 1. And that when I plug in 1, the answer is 6. And so I have to integrate this f 2 over x plus 4x minus 1 dx. The integral of 2 over x is ln absolute value, well, 2 times ln absolute value of x plus 4x squared over 2 minus 1x, or just x, plus c. Again, this is the function, but c is unknown, but they, can, they help me find c. By the way, these cancel, leaving us with 2x squared, and so that's going to be 2 ln absolute value of x plus 2x squared minus x plus c, and I got to plug in 1, 2 times ln absolute value of 1 plus 2 times 1 squared minus um, x plus c is equal to 6. Well, it so happens that ln of 1 is 0, 2 times 1 squared is 2, oh, I got to plug in 1 right here, so that's not an x, that's a 1. So that's 2 uh, minus 1 plus c equals 0. 0 plus 2 minus 1 is 1 plus c equals, what is wrong with me, equals 6. And I subtract 1 from both. So c is equal to negative, positive 5. That goes back into the original problem, which actually is right here. And so that is my function is 2 times ln absolute value of x plus 2x squared minus x plus c. All right, we got um, one bonus question. Bonus. Um, sometimes they give us a graph or a picture and they say, well, based upon this graph or this picture, can you then describe or tell me what the answer is going to be? So, for example, you can say find the area of a given graph. And so, I'll go, they go this way, you go this way, you have a graph of a function that looks like this, and it looks like this right here. Um, this point right here is negative 1, this point right here is 2, and the graph is f of x is equal to 4x cubed plus 5. So if this is 1 and that's negative 2, they want us to find the area inside here on the graph. But that's all they give us. And so what we first have to do is set up the integral. We know that to find the area, we need to use a definite integral. The lower limit of integration is where the shading starts. That's negative 1. The upper limit is where the shading ends. That's 2. And you simply need to integrate the function. 4x cubed plus 5dx. You work this out, it will give us the area beneath the curve. So 4x cubed is 4x add 1 to the power and divide plus 5x. I have to plug in 2, I have to plug in negative 1, and I got to subtract the 2 in. These cancel, by the way. So that's going to be 2 to the 4th power plus 5 times 2. Work that out. Minus uh, negative 1 to the 4th power plus 5 times negative 1. 2 to the 4th power is 16. 5 times 2 is 10. Minus 1 minus 5. That's 26 minus negative 4, and 
so that's 26 plus 4. So that area is 30 square units. And that's it. Good luck.